Hi, my name is Hugo Martin and I'm the game director on Doom Eternal. We're here today to talk about the demons of Doom. The Pain Elemental. The Pain Elemental, we wanted to definitely bring as many characters from Doom 2 uh, back as we could. I think we've, we've gotten all of them. Kind of queuing off some of the design elements that were in the original Cacodemon uh, of 2016 with some of the, the predator-like mandibles. Uh, John Lane this time did this awesome concept where he really steered into it and, and it has instead of like two fangs like the Cacodemon has, it has like, you know, tons of them. There's like six or seven. Every time you design something, I feel like it's important that you think of it like a, like a person, like give it, give it a, a kind of a personality, like if it talked, how would it talk? Does it, would it, would it have like an accent? Would it be like an old person, a young person? So it's like, if you look at the pain element, I, I kind of think of him like a grumpy old man. And a, a lot of his animations and the way he looks, he just looks very crotchety if you actually look at the way he looks. And he has this one bull charge that he does kind of where he kind of like walks like this. It's really funny. It's kind of like a grumpy landlord. I think all the best characters uh, have that, whether it's Jabba, like, you know, this really fat, uh, you know, gangster, or Yoda, like all the great characters uh, that really stand the test of time. They generally have like a personality and you, you know that a concept is there when you can almost hear it. Like when John made this drawing, I feel like when you looked at it, I could even hear the sounds that he would make, which I thought was really cool. From a design standpoint, you know, uh, the, the AI team and myself, we really wanted to make sure that he was definitely, uh, you know, a super heavy unit, you know, a really, really strong, uh, a real bullet sponge. Just sometimes I think you think that that's not enough, but the, they have really cool attacks. They throw lost souls just like in the original. But as a pressure unit uh, in Doom, if they can just take a beating, just that alone uh, can, can make them a really valuable chess piece on the chessboard in that it's not so much that individually by themselves they're hard to kill, but it's that they create openings for the lesser AI. Now it gives them a chance. So the, the soldier that you were stomping on earlier in the game, once a, a pain elemental is pursuing you and you're having to look up and shoot him, now that soldier, he's not such a chump anymore. He's got a, he's got a open shot on you. So uh, th those kind of chess pieces in Doom are really important and the pain elemental is one of our favorites. Arachnatron. Arachnatron, designed by Alex Palma, uh, modeled by Jason Martin, our lead uh, character artist, a uh, very good friend of mine, someone I've worked with for a really long time. No relation? No, no relation, and we don't look anything alike. <laughs> really wanted to infuse some of that UAC tech in with him, and the opportunity to kind of like update these amazing Doom 2 characters is just so much fun with AAA graphics, and then to have our modeling team model them, it's just, it, it's phenomenal. I think if you're a Doom fan, you're just gonna have a smile across your face. He has his uh, grenades that he shoots out of his side canisters, and those are kind of his area of effect weapons, and then he's uh, pretty nimble. He can actually stick to the, to the ceiling of certain places, which is really cool. He, we kind of think of him like a mobile turret. You know, he can kind of hunker down and just light you up. Uh, his, his number one attack is that gun on the top of his head. Uh, we tune that thing to be crazy. So we really want to pressure the player with this attack and we want you to hate that thing. Uh, we're cool with frustrating you so long as we have something to teach you, so long that we promise you that if, if you allow yourself to uh, be steered into the style of play that we want you to, the way we want you to play, that, that you're guaranteed to have a good time. So uh, one of the most fun things in Doom Eternal is to take out the Arachnatron's turret. Uh, because if you don't, he's gonna mess you up pretty bad. So usually a skilled player, and you'll be doing this pretty easily, uh, in no time, you'll, you'll, you'll use either the horoscope or the sticky bomb. We have specific mods on guns and specific guns that are better at taking out weak points than others, especially like some of these precision mods that we have. So as soon as you, you see him, uh, the pro tip is to take out the Arachnatron's turret, otherwise he's really, really gonna mess you up. And then you'll pretty much change the way that AI behaves. Now the only thing that he can do is drop grenades. Um, so he, it, it really changes the way he operates, which is really cool. And, and you could feel like the combat dance kind of change uh, based on the player's actions. Uh, and he looks awesome. He could shoot up his brain and all the parts come out and then you see like these rib, rib bones in his brain, 
which I don't know why they're rib, bro rib bones in his brain, but uh, it looks cool. <laughs> and uh, you can actually take his little arms and stick them in his eye when you kill him in some of the glory kills, so it's really, really fun. It's one of my favorite demons. Archvile. Definitely knew from the very beginning that we wanted to bring him back. So the, the little uh, insider information, the summoner from Doom 2016 was basically uh, the arch file uh, for that game. In terms of a chess piece, he definitely fills that role this time around, but this time it's the real arch file. Um, he functions very much the same way, and we worked hard to get the poses uh, to be just like the original. Yeah, uh, definitely an homage. I mean, I think with a lot of the designs of the characters, we just knew that we wanted to be able to bring these 1994 sprites to life with AAA graphics. We felt like that's what would be the most fun. And it's a testament to the guys that designed those, the original id guys, because they still hold up. From a design perspective, he's elusive, and with our elusive AI, we use them to drag the player around the space. Anytime that we make the player move in Doom, uh, it's, it, it feels good for the player. And also another, another key component of what we call like the fun zone in Doom, which is just like this, this list of activities that we know if the player's doing these things that they're gonna be having a good time and uh, moving is one of them, and prioritizing targets is definitely one of them. That keeps you thinking, that keeps you engaged. So as soon as the arch file comes up, you can hear him, you can see him, you can see that he's starting to spawn in guys on the screen, and it's a ticking time clock at that point. You have to go and kill him before he spawns in those guys because he's gonna spawn in some really, really heavy dudes. Uh, that, that really changes the meta of the game on the fly. Um, he has a firewall that he puts up, which is really gnarly and he shoots these fire waves at you. The AI team worked extremely hard. You're gonna love this guy. You're, he's gonna be one of the guys you love to hate. The Hellified Soldier. The Hellified Soldier, we just wanted to make a soldier that looked like the original Doom soldiers with the green hair because we thought they were awesome. Um, he was brought back from the last game, but we, we changed up his model to make him look more like the original Doom guy, and I think the guys nailed it. Standing on the shoulders of giants, the people who designed the original Doom characters, that sprite looked awesome. All we had to do was translate that into, into 3D, uh, which was a really fun exercise. Some of the new things that you'll notice with him when you play the game is he's not really a chump this time around. Like, yes, he, he's fodder and he's there to be farmed. The resource management uh, game in Doom is strong and it's a big part of the experience. It's what helps you get into that flow state and one of the best guys to farm is the soldiers. But if you just mosey up to the soldier, uh, all lackadaisical-like, and think you have an eternity to put that shotgun to his chest, he is going to blast you in the face. He's got a really, really strong melee swipe this time, as do really all the AI. We, want, we think of them as like, if, if you're gonna run up to them and, and, and wanna try to engage them at close range, you've gotta really set it up. You gotta think about it a little bit first, and you'll notice that with him. He's got a hell of a shot. So those are some of the demons that we brought back from Doom 2, but now let's talk about some of the demons, the new guys that you're going to see in Doom Eternal. Whiplash. Man, this AI is uh, a real pain in the ass, I gotta be honest. So he, she, he, so she's actually our first uh, female demon. She, she's not entirely anatomically correct because we want to be able to use her in marketing images. And so like we had to just kind of keep things sort of nondescript. She gets down on the ground and she slithers around and anything that, that gets the player to uh, take crosshairs off the center of the screen, within reason, if you ask the player to do that too much, it's gonna get pretty annoying. When she drops down to the ground, she slithers like a salamander across the floor and she tries to actually flank you and get behind you, then she'll pop up and rake you with her whips, which is a really devastating attack. The, the point of this is because we know one of the, the elements of the fun zone is to get the player to move. We know that this will make the player move. Believe me, you're gonna track this thing as soon as it comes out. And she pushes the player around more than anybody else. And anytime the player's moving like that, it just feels really good. And you're gonna prioritize her, which is another one of the really important things of, of the Doom Dance that makes it feel really good. So she slithers across the floor. You're gonna track her with your guns. She does kind of make you also use certain weapons because we think of the weapons like tools and the AI are kind of like problems and you wanna bring the right tool uh, for the job, so to speak. So when she comes up, maybe you're using the shotguns or certain weapons, but you're definitely probably gonna to switch to something that's, that's good for tracking something that moves really fast. 
Uh, we have mods for that specifically. We have the microwave mod, for example, that can freeze her in place and fry her. We've got the ice bomb that can freeze anything. So it's kind of purposely designed to steer, to, to motivate the player to dabble and, 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 uh, in, in more mods and, and different attacks that maybe they haven't been using up to that point. I asked to talk about her because she's one of my favorite AI uh, in the game. It's really just a brand new chess piece for Doom Eternal, and I think it's going to be a lot of people's favorite thing to uh, shoot and murder and glory kill. And, and she has one of the best uh, glory kills uh, in the game. Uh, if everybody remembers um, 43, Steven Seagal movies from back in the day, they were awesome. Uh, now he's kind of, maybe not so awesome, but he used to be awesome. He would always do this thing where he would like hyperextend bad guys' arms and just do awful things with their arms. So we, we had to put in like a Steven Seagal glory kill. So there's one where you grab her arm, you hyperextend it, the whatever this bone is called sticks out, and then you like shove it in the demon's head. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's, it's like one of my favorite glory kills. So I can't wait for you to see it. Tentacles. The tentacle uh, is one of the new AI in Doom, but it's actually, uh, we're pretty proud of this. It's not really a full AI. Like we have AI that do the craziest thing and they traverse all over the place. This is actually kind of like pest level AI, like an ambient AI. It was a fair criticism of Doom 2016 that it relied heavily on arena combat. And we thought our arena combat was awesome and it's even better this time around. But we needed to do more to challenge the player in between the arenas. We needed to make sure that the time you spent between the huge fights was just as engaging as the huge fights were, maybe even more so. Well, we developed uh, like a pest AI to help with that, which is the tentacle. Now, sometimes they're hiding underwater and you can't see them. And sometimes they're in these wormholes that are kind of scattered throughout the level. But you can't really tell which wormhole they're gonna pop up from. It's kind of like whack-a-mole. And they give you a pretty good whack if you don't pay attention, but they kind of give you a chance to shoot them because there's like a little metagame in there. So the player has a window to take them out before they get whacked. And it's fun. I think it keeps you on your toes. The, the main thing as a, as a designer is we really just want to keep you thinking. I mean, that's kind of the whole point. Like you could either just run through a hallway with, without a concern, or we could fill the hall, we could turn off the lights and fill the hallway with a bunch of wormholes. And that'll make that journey through that hallway just a little bit more uh, interesting, really kind of keep you on your toes. And that's really the goal with Doom Eternal is to make sure that we're engaging you in the experience uh, from beginning to end. The Marauder. In Doom, you're going to be kind of leveled up like a martial artist. In the first hour, you get your white belt. A couple hours in, you get a blue belt. You're gonna work your way up. And at some point, you're gonna become a black belt. And when you're there, then the third act of the game, it's more about just showing off just how badass you can be. And the game is kind of aware that you have your black belt and there is another black belt out there waiting to face you. You are Obi-Wan and this is your Darth Maul and you guys are gonna have this awesome fight. Uh, you're gonna fight a couple times in the game, actually. He's gonna hold you accountable. He's gonna see just how good you are at the Doom Dance. And when he's there, he is definitely like a queen chess piece on the board. Uh, and he is going to create a lot of openings, as I said with the other guys, for the pawns and the other chess pieces that have been out there that you've been kicking their butts the whole time. Um, so it makes for this really interesting meta where you're gonna wanna try to get rid of everybody else. Kinda like in a good Bruce Lee movie. When the Grandmaster comes out, you gotta get rid of the white belts first, and then you can face the Grandmaster, so that way you're not dealing with anything else. So, and that in itself makes for a really dynamic combat encounter. So I don't really wanna give away too much, but hopefully uh, it's intriguing enough to get you guys to dive into the lore. That's why we do that stuff. Try to expand the Doom universe. He's awesome. Doom Hunter. We, we try to find new ways to uh, uh, give the characters ways to move around, new, new, new approaches to locomotion. So that way it can make for uh, a little bit more variety on the battlefield. You know, we consider like what the player sees while they're scanning their targets. And if everybody just has two legs and runs around like a man, that's pretty lame. So that's why we have like the pinky who charges like a, you know, like a bull and uh, other characters who fly around. But the, the Doom Hunter, he, he floats around on like this hover tank and on his tank, He's got some of his strongest attacks that are, that are on the tank, the sled that he actually rides on. And then he's got the upper part of him, which shoots like this cannon and has like a chainsaw. So what's really cool is that you could disable, one of his weak points is you can actually disable his sled and make it so he can't use his primary attacks. Again, just like the Arachnotron, making him far less effective. 
Huge shout out to the AI team once again, because this stuff is super hard to do. You, it's a kind of a two-stage two battle. The first stage, you work to disable his sled. Once the sled is destroyed, he will actually pull himself off the sled and then hover around just his, the upper half of him. And then he kind of, he completely changes. He goes from like a hover tank to like a hummingbird. He'll fly all around, attacking you with his guns, swiping you with his uh, chainsaw. It's really, really awesome that, uh, we just feel like it's, it's so cool that through the course of battle, as you disable these weak points, you can completely change the behavior of the AI, which is something we worked uh, extremely hard, uh, hard on. Carcass. Again, we're, we're comfortable with frustrating the player. Just so long as we have something to teach you, what we're doing is pushing you into a more fun style of play, we promise. And we know that weapon switching uh, and using a variety of different weapons uh, will help keep the game fresh for hours. So that way you're not just doing the same thing again and again. You're not going to play the game for very long if that's all you're doing. The rocket launcher this time around is way stronger, messes up tons of dudes. It also does a ton more uh, damage to the player. Self damage is way higher and it shoots a lot slower. High risk reward uh, gun. Just like in the original Doom, you kind of don't want to run around with it like it's a rifle or spam it, um, which is kind of what you could do in 2016, which wasn't awesome. The carcass was designed specifically to take that gun uh, out of your hands. So uh, he'll throw up this shield, this, this electric shield right in front of your face. And a lot of times for people who are relying on the rocket launcher a little too much, they'll actually, uh, it'll, it'll blow the rocket up right in front of their face and kill the player. So as soon as you see the carcass and you see his shield pop up, you're gonna switch away from your rocket launcher or or if you're skilled enough, you could just dance around and use your movement to be able to create opportunities to kill him with the rocket launch. So we're not saying you have to not use the rocket launch. We're just saying this AI specifically is designed to kind of try to make you think a bit more when you're using it. And thinking is really what we want you to do in Doom Eternal more than anything else, because when you're thinking, you're engaged. And when you're not thinking, you're bored and you'll go play something else. So those are the demons of Doom Eternal. That's not even all the demons. I, I work there, I don't even know how many there are. They're some of the best chess pieces that I think the studio has ever made. And I think you are going to love fighting them. They're gonna make you feel strong. They're gonna make you think. They're gonna give you something to master as you overcome all the different challenges that they present to you. Look out for Doom Eternal on March 20th, 2020.